Well, well, welcome back. I'm George, and uh, we're so glad to have you with us again today. So all of you brewers, uh, beer makers, wine makers, uh, anybody out in our community, we're just so glad that you've decided to join us. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and share us with your friends. I mean, it really helps. So thanks a lot, and don't forget to comment below. All right, today we're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna do this experiment together. Now you can do this at home. It's really, really simple. But what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to unleash the knowledge about gravity, the gravity points. Now, not the standard gravity on Earth. I'm talking about the, uh, the specific gravity of a mash, a beer, a wine, uh, what it's all about and really how to get to it. So, but we've gotta have some data points. And, um, I, and I know the data points that we use often in these videos, and thanks to my European friends who reminded me that, hey, the world doesn't revolve around the US. Uh, you got a good point, so I'll start using the metric system as well. Uh, got it. One gallon is equal to 3.8 liters. So, and, um, and now in the metric system, that's the 3.8 liters, but then we do by weights, if we do a, uh, a one pound in a uh, weight, uh, U.S. weight is equal to uh, 454 grams uh, in the metric. Uh, half a pound is 227 grams. So I'll, I'll throw those up on the screen as we're going through. So it just keeps everybody on the same point. It's, we're all using data points, but we gotta all use the same data points uh, or universal data points that we can convert back and forth. All right. Now, we're gonna prove something today that uh, I already know, uh, most of you should already know, about gravity points and what will a pound of sugar produce. Um, I'll tell you that it'll produce 39 gravity points, but what does that really mean? We gotta get there. Let's prove it first and then let's get there. All right, what we have is we have, I've got a half a gallon of water, because I theorize that if I use a half a gallon of water and a half a pound, 227 grams of sugar, it would be the same thing as using one gallon, 3.8 liters, and one pound, 454 grams of sugar. It would be the same thing. Uh, and we're gonna measure that. Now we're gonna use our hydrometer, and this is a hydrometer, not a proof and trail hydrometer, which we kinda get mixed up a lot. We get a lot of questions about that, and trust me, I don't mind. And oh, by the way, if you wanna talk with me about it, and you have a question, just dial the phone number below. Yes, I, I, I do get quite a few phone calls, and with 25,000 subscribers, they come pretty regular, but don't worry, I'll, I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, I do better on the comments. Uh, just understand, it's, that's a lot of phone calls, but I don't mind. Okay, uh, I've got my grab my cylinder that I'll use to test, uh, and I've already weighed out uh, the sugar. So here, let's add the sugar into the uh, water that I already have as well, and I've got this water is already down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit because this is calibrated to measure accurately at 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we start off with the right temperature. Now if you're off a little bit, there's a correction factor, but if, gosh, if it's like 66 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, the correction factor you add 0 .001. So it would go from, point zero, from 39 gravity points to 39.1. You know, it's a real small, minute. Um, now look, I'm gonna add this in here. And uh, the reason I use corn sugar, I use corn sugar almost regularly or routinely for any of my additions. If I'm trying to boost alcohol or create a neutral spirit uh, or add alcohol content to beer or wine. And I use that because it's 100% fermentable is the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is, is it dissolves in cool water. Uh, we all know that the, your, your regular table sugar, you have, it's a bear. I mean, you gotta heat up the water to get that stuff to, to liquefy um, or else you're, you're running around with crystals all over the place. You never really get a good reading. Uh, now table sugar will work just as well as corn sugar. Um, table sugars is about 15% is non-fermentable. But look, are we gonna really worry about that at this point? Uh, you know, the 15% you may lose, um, please don't try to chase that. It, it's not worth it. Uh, you're looking at, you know, what, maybe less than a percentage of alcohol. Uh, it, the only difference is really, it may leave just a little bit of residual sweetness in your mash. 
Um, but for those of you who want to be real finite about your product, um, and you want to get everything exactly right, I'd, I'd recommend corn sugar because, of course, 100% of it's fermentable. Now, there are charts out there that'll tell you what, how many gravity points per amount of that product in a specified amount of water, um, how, how much it will produce. So you can use the same theory for, for any and all of those. Just look for those charts online. Now you'll notice here, I'm going to let this, this takes probably about oh, two or three minutes for it to actually all uh, liquefy. And I can, I can already see the bottom of it. It's just a little bit cloudy. So we're going to let this set for just about three or four minutes and I'll be back with you. And we're going to go on with the next step of our experiment. This only, that only took about two minutes. Um, now I've already poured the, uh, this liquid into my cylinder. So this again has a half a pound and a half a gallon of water, which is, would be just like one pound and one gallon of water. And we're gonna measure the specific gravity. And um, this is our experiment, and it's gonna tell us e exactly how many gravity points will that much sugar and water um, produce or measure. Um, and then we'll get on to what that actually really means, because it's really, really important. Now, if we drop our hydrometer, and you know, you give it a spin like you normally would, and we're going to read that, and not sure about you, but I get about 1.039, and that's um, that's what we're that's what I had predicted. So that, now we know that for sure. Okay. Uh, now, oh by the way, uh, on the brick scale, it's about 8.5, almost nine. Uh, if you're using the brick scale. And that's, uh, again, a European measurement. Uh, but they're both just as good. It's just which one you use. Now, the data point on a hydrometer, and this is in one of our hydrometer, how to read a hydrometer videos, is 1.000. And that's for specific gravity. It starts at one. Uh, for the brick scale, it starts at zero. A lot simpler. You know, as a matter of fact, when it comes to metric, I'm just, I, I kind of like metric a whole lot more because uh, it is more direct and simple. Uh, another story all in itself. All right, now we're back to where we were. All right, we know what a pound of sugar in a gallon of water will produce. But let's dig into that and try to find out what effect that has on our mash, as an example, or beer or wine. And here's a question for you. If I know that one pound and one gallon equals 1.039 gravity, because it raised at 39 gravity points. How much, what would be the gravity if I put five pounds of sugar in five gallons of water? Yeah, that sh should be a pretty simple one. It should still be 1.039, you know, because Pound per gallon, pound per gallon, pound per gallon. But there's there's a way to figure out the other portion. Right? We're going to get to that. Let's do that. All right. Okay. Now this shouldn't make your head hurt. All right. It should be fairly simple and straightforward. Um, and I'll try to do this as simple as I possibly can. We know that one pound of sugar in one gallon of water will raise it by. 39 gravity points. And we already know that the data point starts at 1. So it's really 1.000. And so that means that that one gallon, if you drop the hydrometer in there, would read 1.039. All right, got that far. Now, here's the, here's the, the, the formula for figuring out alcohol by volume. Regard as long as you have a hydrometer, you'll be able to figure out alcohol by volume. And there's two ways to do it. There you go. I'm going to show you first. I'm going to show you the long method. Then I'm going to show you the short method. And then we'll move on. Well, the formula is beginning or initial gravity minus final gravity equals whatever it equals times 131.2. And that will equal your alcohol by volume, your ABV, potential. 
Okay? Let's do that on the calculator. And let's say, for instance, we just did this one gallon at 1.039. So we know that the original gravity is 1.039 minus 1, 1.039. Final gravity, that we hope to get to 1, our data point, is 1. Subtract that, and what do you have? You have 0 0.039. So if we took 0 0.039, which is here, multiply it times 131.25, that equals, ta-da, 5.11% alcohol by volume. So that's what you could potentially ex expect uh, if everything goes well in fermentation. Now, there's another way of doing that. And the other way of doing that is on the, your hydrometer. Your hydrometer has a really nifty little scale on the side of it. And it's in between the bricks and the specific gravity. And it's a percentage scale. And if you read on the bottom, it'll say potential. This one says appropriate potential. So the math is already done for you if you read the side of the scale. So if we drop this in at point at 1.039, that, that, was, that was our gravity reading, and you rotate that over, you'll find that you'll be right at about the 5% mark. Just a little bit of it. What do you think? 5.11% alcohol by volume. Pop up. All right. Now let's do, for instance, let's, let's just say we're going to use 12 pounds of sugar. See, my goal is normally 12 to 15% alcohol by volume. <laughs> if you're going to use 12 pounds of sugar, what would be the alcohol by volume? Well, it should be relatively simple. Let's do this. We take 0 0.039 times 12, because it's 12 pounds of sugar, and that, whatever that equals, we need to find out what is the volume. If you're using five gallons, you would divide by five, because you're using five gallons. Divided by five, and that, whatever that answer is, you multiply by 131.25. One, so let's do the 12 gallons. And if we took 0 0.039 times 12 pounds equals 0.468. And we'll write that in here while we're doing it. 0.468, that's the gravity points. And then we divide that by 5. We get 0.0936. And we multiply that by 131.25. That will give us 12.28% ABV. And that's simple. Here's an easier way to do it. <laughs> you know, 12 pounds of sugar. 12 pounds of sugar added into your five gallons, when you float that, let me roll this over here. Should should float somewhere somewhere around 1.0 what? 8589 somewhere around that neighborhood. And if you just rotate the scale over, you'll see that it falls right at about the 12% mark. And that's the beginning. See, now you can do that by math or you can do that by using your hydrometer scale. So the key is, is that you drop the hydrometer in, you take the, it's, it works backwards, it's counterintuitive. You drop your scale, your hydrometer in, you record the numbers you read, whether it's a percentage or the alcohol by volume, if you want to, or the uh, specific gravity, if you want to do it this way. You record that, and then after fermentation, you drop it in again. So let's say, for instance, you drop this in and it floated at 12%. If it floated at 12% at the beginning of fermentation, you're using corn sugar, you can expect to go down to one. If you're using table sugar, it may stop at 1.008, somewhere around that neighborhood. 
Uh, but after fermentation, you drop it in again, and it does stop at 1.008. What would that be? Uh, that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1%. So you'll take that 12% initial reading, subtract the 1%, and that leaves you with 11. So you got 11% ABV. So you see what I mean? It, it, it reads backwards. Please don't use the proof and trail hydrometer. Trust me, if you use that, you drop it in there, you'll lose it. It'll take off. So that kind of wraps it up and that tells us how we get to ABV and why that's so very important. Uh, now remember, there is no way to create more alcohol without the addition of sugar. I don't care how much yeast you add or what type of yeast you add at that point, uh, you're not gonna create any more alcohol if you don't have the fermentable sugars. It's because the byproduct of the total amount of, of fermentable sugars is where your alcohol comes from. The byproduct is alcohol and CO2 unleashed by your yeast colony, okay? Well, that's it. Until next time, share us with your friends, all that other good stuff, and as always, happy distilling.